made it home, I dug her out, then I made her one of my aces Marijuana fragrance, this tree here is outrageous Want me to play in your city, send an email to my agent Yo, what's going on everybody? It is Straight Out of Austin here, aka the King of Austin And today we're back for episode 5 of the Georgia State Dynasty And today, Ross Jackson is scheduled to visit this week, Tyree Parker and Kyle Flowers are ready to visit so we're going to schedule them for this week we have another fcs matchup the last of the season i promise you guys the rest will be real opponents so we're going to schedule them against an fcs opponent that way it should be an easy win for us hopefully although i don't know week two was pretty tough so kyle flowers we're going to try and put maximum points into we're beating out burns in that race and you can see here we're going to take points away from craig harris because we have a huge lead on him keeping the max on dan maxi you can see we're monitoring a few players i probably could take points away from Gavin Edwards. I'm so far behind on Jonathan Harone, uh, but I kind of want this guy, so I think I'm going to put some extra points into him, and that would pretty much be all allocated points to, for this week. So today we're facing off against FCS Midwest, and today we hopefully will be advancing to 3-1. and We're 2-1 and entering this game, and I'd like to think that we can beat an FCS opponent, but as I said before, these guys outrank us, or out, you know, they have a higher overall than us is what I'm trying to say, so. But, you know, I think I'm a pretty good player, and I've beat two FCS teams in the past, so I think we can win this game. Hopefully we can. I have a lot of confidence going into it. At least look at this. 65 offense, 65 defense, but their special teams has got to be like a 40, because I don't know how they're only 63 overall, but it is what it is. I'm not complaining. You know, I, I get the same thing. You know, my offense, defense, 61, but yeah, I don't know. Whatever. So anyway, taking a look at the intro cutscene right here. We are hyped up to play this game back in the Georgia Dome after a tough, tough loss to West Virginia last week. That was very tough. Um, really, we almost beat, the, you know, we almost knocked off West Virginia. That would have been a huge upset in Morgantown, but, you know, it is what it is. Can't really do anything about it. Uh, you know, I was very happy with how we played. I think we learned a lot about our team. We learned that we can play with the big boys. We are ready for FBS football. So, anyway, an update on Burns entering this week. He has a bye week, I believe, this week. And he is 1 and 2, I think, entering this. Now, uh, he will have a video up today as well. It's just going to be a recruiting update. Now, next week, I have a bye week, and he has a game. So, it's going to be kind of flipped. The rules are going to be flipped. I'm just going to have a recruiting update, an update on the top 25, all that stuff. But, if you guys are interested in seeing the top 25 and the Heisman watch, I suggest you go check out Burns' videos. Um... He shows all that stuff in the beginning of his videos, I do believe, or maybe at the end. I think it's at the beginning, though, so. Anyway, uh, if you're interested in all that stuff, go check out his videos. Now, the point of the series is to have you guys watch both of our dynasties. Now, obviously, you don't have to. Uh, if you prefer me as a commentator, if you prefer Burns as a commentator, it is what it is. But I think, um, you know, it is l pretty exciting to kind of be in the same universe or whatever. And, well, you know what I mean, so. Anyway, uh, go check out his videos. I'll leave his channel link in the description. Go check out his Dynasty videos because you guys don't know, we're in the same Dynasty. This is an online Dynasty. So fourth and one here, we're going for it. Ronnie Bell slides, picks up the first down. At midfield, I'm usually going to go for it because fourth and short, at least. You know, if it's like fourth and three, I won't go for it. But fourth and two, fourth and one, fourth and inches. Eh, not that hard, so. Anyway, here's another read option right here. It's going to be a handoff to Travis Evans. Up the middle, Evans is going to pick up about 13 yards on the play. First down for the Panthers. Now, we are driving here almost at the red zone. I think, yeah, we're in the red zone, actually, at the 15-yard line. So, now, Beldrash, like, he's going to get sacked. We lose 9 yards on the play. That's going to set up 4th and 15. And, believe it or not, this is actually too long of a field goal for our kicker. So, that's why we're going for it. 4th and 15. And, man, we had no shot. <laughs> Um, yeah, believe it or not, a kicker can't make field goals past, like, 40 yards, so we had to go for it there, or else we were going to have to punt it, which I'm not going to punt it there, so, <laughs> anyway, um, uh, third and four, Dominique Moore makes the catch, and he somehow picks up the first down, man, there's something up with the CPU this year, they just make a higher percentage of their plays on third down than they do on any other down, here's another one, third and nine, they pick it up, of course, uh, a couple people have noticed that, Nottis fan told Burns about that, they were talking at one point, and, you know, Burns agrees, and I agree, so it's a little bit weird, Here's the first and 10, though. A nice pitch right there to Brad Harper. Not Bryce Harper's brother, but Brad Harper picks up 29 yards on the triple option play right there. This is a triple option offense that FCS Midwest is running. Goff is going to end up finding Cruz over the middle. Ryan Cruz picks up 11 yards on the play, and it's a first down for FCS Midwest there. Driving third and six. Goff drops back. He fires into screenplay to Walker, who gets tackled before he can reach the first down. Dwayne Walker cannot get there, so now that's going to bring on the field goal unit for FCS Midwest. And they're going to kick this field goal up and good. So that one is going to take the lead for FCS Midwest. 3-0 now. Georgia State needs to respond. Here's a read option play. Quarterback keeper from Bell cuts to the outside. And he will pick up a nice chunk of yards. About 15 on the play. 
first and 10 for Georgia State and now later in the drive on first and 10 here's another option play Evans in motion this one is going to be another quarterback keeper Bell is going to end up trying to break tackle uses his momentum picks up nine yards probably picked up an extra two yards on that play just from kind of being tackled the way he was Bell now is going to cut inside pick up the first down at second and five eight yard rush Ronnie Bell really getting things done he has established himself as the starter for our team now he scrambles right, looking, fires over the middle to Danny Williams. That's something I've been getting better at Bell with, is throwing, being a little bit more mobile with our throws, and just, you know, I mean, really, McLean is a better pocket passer. He's a better thrower, but Bell's uh, multi-dimensions really give us an edge. So, anyway, that's going to be another 9-yard sack. 3rd and 18. Now, on 3rd and 18, we're going to have to get, have guys go deep. Bell looking over the middle, caught, and then dropped by Jordan Giles. So that's going to set up a fourth down. Here comes a field goal unit. This one just slightly in our range, about 37 yards. That one is up and just good. So obviously we have a very weak kicker. That's something we need to improve in the coming years. I don't think I have a kicker being recruited right now, but that might have to change. We'll see what happens. Either way, Goff, triple option here. He's going to pass it over the middle to Dominique Moore. Moore picks up 11 yards, and that is going to set up a first down. Now second and 14, Goff drops back into the shotgun. Fires over the middle, intercepted by Bautista. He is going to pick up the first turnover of the game for the FCS Midwest, whatever you call them. I don't even know what team they are, but either way, third and 13 now. Bell is going to drop back. He's looking to the right side, and he finds Danny Williams. The ability to throw on those third and longs is key for Ronnie Bell if he wants to maintain his job as the starting quarterback on this team. Here's a first down. We have some guys going deep. This is that fake screen wheel route that I said works so well, and Jordan Giles into the end zone. 49 yards on the touchdown. Really, you know, if you got two guys on the left, both of them tend to go and cover the guy in the screen. So Giles always finds himself open. So now we get the ball back later in the in the uh, second quarter. Albert Wilson on a screenplay picks up nine yards. Ten to three is your score. Panthers on top. 30 seconds left now. Georgia State looking. Fires to the left. Jordan Giles gets the makes the catch. I should say. 24 seconds now. I believe we're going to call a timeout eventually. Yes, we do. So now with 24 seconds left on first and ten, Bell drops back. Fires left, and that's caught by Jordan Giles, his second touchdown of the game. And we extend our lead now to 17-3, blowing this game open a little bit before the half. That is a key for us. We want to put these guys away. We don't want to let them hang around. So Georgia State up by 14 points. Impressive half, both ends of the game, I should say. Or, you know you know what I mean, like offense, defense, really looking good. Just dominating a team that, you know, not necessarily we should beat, but a team that I want to beat personally. So either way. Here's the Nissan Halftime Report, and as usual, I'm not going to show any of these highlights because there's no point in showing plays that you've probably already seen. So, anyway, here is a, uh, a recap or whatever of the uh, first half team stats, and now we will move on to the second half. So, FCS Midwest starting out with the ball. Goff looking left, finds Allen over the middle, breaks the tackle, breaks two tackles actually, and then gets pushed forward. So, Jermaine Allen picks up 16 yards on the play. FCS Midwest will try to drive down the field and get back into this game. Goff looking left, finds Dominique Moore into the backfield. He's been a favorite target of Goff so far today. Moore with an eight yard reception. He's saying something back to us. Here's a little read option play. It's a fig. Goff throws it to Brad Harper, the popular running back from this team. And Harper breaks two tackles and will get shoved out of bounds, but not before picking up 30 yards on the play. First and 10 now for FCS Midwest. Now fourth and two. They are going for it here. That is going to be a pitch to Allen. And it's a fumble picked up by McClendon. And he could go all the way. McClendon down the field. No one will catch him. What a turn of events for the Georgia State Panthers after looking like they were going to let up a touchdown, let FCS Midwest back in this game because they would have cut the lead to seven right there. What a huge momentum turner. Stupid decision. Well, I'm not going to say stupid decision to go for it there, but it's obviously hindsight is 20-20. It doesn't work out, but here's a terribly blown coverage by me, and that's going to result in a deep touchdown for FCS Midwest. So I got to get better at my coverage as a middle linebacker. I like to cover the linebacker and the safety sometimes, cover the middle of the field because I like to prevent slant routes and all that, all that stuff. It's kind of annoying. So, you know, I got to get better at that. That's my one weakness, and that cost me right there. So FCS Midwest gets a touchdown, 24-10 to right now. Here comes the Georgia State Panthers, though, driving once again. Ronnie Bell drops back third and 10. He's going to look left, finds Danny Williams. Really impressive throw so far today by Ronnie Bell. You know, he had that interception earlier, but that was really on a fourth down. It, 
it honestly worked out because they had worse field position than if they had just got the turnover on downs. Here's a nice screenplay to Albert Wilson, our star wide receiver. He picks up 18 yards. That's going to set up a first and 10. A score here might ice this game and make it a three possession game with just five minutes to play. After running the clock down a bit, triple option play right here, a read option, and then a pitch, and uh, if Bell keeps it. He gets sacked. They, they had no choice, so... Fourth and four, field goal unit out once again, and that kick is up and good. That pretty much ices this game, 27 to 10. That's a three possession game with three and a half to play. Pretty much, this game seems to be over. So, anyway, second and four, FCS Midwest not going to give up, obviously. Goff finds his man, Hall, down the right side. I believe, yeah, Damon Hall will pick up the first down. Now, second and 15, Goff out of the shotgun once again. Looking, looking, he's going to end up firing that one deep. That's going to be brought in by Henderson. Henderson will be forced out of bounds with a 27-yard pickup on the play. And now, shotgun formation once again for Goff. Goff is going to find his man, Ryan Cruz, into the end zone for the touchdown. So they cut the lead to 10. And now, coming up next will be the onside kick. If this is recovered by Georgia State, this should be the game. And that will be recovered by Gerald House, our backup running back. I'm going to run some clock off a little bit here, run backwards, try to give us more field to work with. Usually, when I'm running the clock out, I like to have a lot of field to work with. So, anyway... Third and one here, game on the line. First down means this game will be sealed as FCS Midwest will have to call their last time out. Bell gets the first down. He's going to end up sliding to avoid the fumble, and that is going to be your ball game. We would run off the clock from there. You're going to see time winding down one second, and the clock will hit triple zeros. Georgia State comes away with the victory. 27-17, to they take care of business against an FCS Midwest team that, obviously, like I said, although they outrank us, they outmatch us, they out overall us, whatever you want to say, it's a team that I expect to beat, it's a team that I want to beat, and Georgia State, although all three wins have come against FCS teams, an impressive 3-1 start to the year, Georgia State showing that they do belong in the FBS. So anyway, that's going to wrap up this video. Thank you guys for watching. Hope you did enjoy. So it's Peace.